you know, sometimes here on the channel, I get a comment that says, don't talk about politics, just talk about investing, as if they get to tell me what to do. Number one, it's my channel. But number two, you cannot separate politics from investing. And by the way, if you are, then you're not a smart investor. That's why individuals understand what's going on in Washington, D.C., and politicians in the EU and other places all drive the investing environment. How can you possibly invest and not have an understanding of what's happening with your political leaders right now? It's insane. And so today's topic is all around the differences between the two parties as it relates to investing blue states versus red states for real estate investing. I know this might be uncomfortable for some of you people out there that have a certain worldview, but we're just going to give you the facts. We're going to stick to the facts. And this is ultimately to help you become a better investor. So when it comes to investing in rental properties, the old real estate adage applies. Location, location, location. Choosing a market to invest in should not be taken lightly. And on today's show, I'm going to share some of the insider info on the best states to buy real estate. Hey, everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor, the founder of Morris Invest, which is a full service real estate company that helps investors buy rental properties in the best markets in the United States. Now, over my investing career, I've tried my hand at quite a few different states. I started out buying low-cost homes in Midwestern states like Indiana, Michigan. And then I did a quick stint at investing in my old backyard in New Jersey. Huge mistake. Huge mistake, okay? And today, I exclusively add rental properties to my portfolio that are located in landlord-friendly states. And let me tell you, making this switch changed everything for me as an investor. So here's what I've learned. If you wanna have a positive experience as a landlord, you've got to buy your properties in a landlord-friendly state, bottom line. And 99% of the time, these landlord-friendly states happen to be red states. Is there any coincidence? I don't know. Let me repeat that. 99% of the time, these landlord-friendly states happen to be red states. So what is a landlord-friendly state? And why does it matter if you're an investor? Well, as you know, in the United States, different states can have different laws on everything. And this includes the rights of landlords and tenants. Even cities in these blue states and red states can have different regulations. These regulations are extremely localized, which is why understanding the laws before you invest is instrumental in your success. A landlord-friendly state has legislation that favors the real estate investor. We're going to talk about a few key factors in a minute, but for now, just know that a landlord-friendly state gives the investor more control over how they manage their real estate business. There's not one defining feature or metric that makes a state landlord-friendly or not, and that's why the market research absolutely matters. If you fail to do this, it can ruin your experience as a landlord and turn you off to reaching your goals through real estate investing. And while there's not a database or a sort of a definitive checklist on what makes a state landlord friendly. A good place to start, though, is by assessing red states versus blue states. Like, that's the place to start. More often than not, a red state is going to have more landlord-friendly legislation. It's going to be more pro-business and will have less tolerance for tenants who don't pay or don't play the system. So let's get into a few criteria you should look for in a state to invest, okay? Evictions. Now, in a perfect world, evictions wouldn't exist. No investor wants to deal with this at all, right? A tenant moves in, pays rent, and everyone's happy. Well, guess what? Sometimes, unfortunately, evictions have to happen. In landlord-friendly states, you're going to see laws that favor the landlord, meaning it's easier to start and complete an eviction process. In states that aren't as landlord-friendly, the eviction process can be lengthy and difficult. Many blue states favor the tenant when it comes to evictions. And, and they know that. They actually play the system. Uh, we have pro what we call professional tenants who will, in these blue states, will move into a house with no intention of ever actually renting the house. And immediately, the, the landlord then has to start the eviction process because they haven't received that next month's rent. And guess what? It can be costly. It can take a year or longer. And you have to hire a lawyer. And that person knows the game. So now that person has like a year of free rent in that house because they know the process. And then they get booted out of that house and they do it all over again. Might use a different name, different number, social security information, different ID. They're very, very good at it. But red states don't tolerate this. So I want you to be on the lookout for states that have your best interests in mind. Should an eviction be necessary? I hope you won't have to deal with many evictions. But if you do, and you may, maybe very likely will, 
You'll be glad you followed my advice investing in landlord friendly states. All right, next up, rent control. States that aren't landlord friendly might have rent control laws in place. So what is rent control? Well, it's when certain areas restrict how much you can charge for rent. The point is to prevent price gouging. That's fair. But depending on market conditions, rent control can hurt your bottom line. Security deposit laws. How much can you charge for a security deposit? And what types of damages come out of that deposit? Well, this is all dictated by the state laws. Again, this is another one of those metrics that can vary greatly across state lines. So be sure you know what you're getting into. Next, red tape. What kinds of registrations and licenses are you responsible for in this state? As a general statement, a landlord-friendly state is going to have fewer hoops and hurdles for you to jump through in order to run your business. This doesn't make or break a rental market for me, but again, something to be aware of in the long run. We'll get back to that video in a minute, but first, I need to tell you about a golden opportunity for investors that's happening right now. Mortgage rates have plummeted in anticipation of the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates at their upcoming meeting in September. Now, it's good news for buyers, and it has presented a unique overlap in the investing world right now. Remember, when mortgage rates spiked last year, well, a lot of sellers started offering incentives to help investors achieve positive cash flow. For example, my company, Morris Invest, and our our team over at Sidera Wealth started offering clients a rate buy-down credit. Now, a rate buy-down drastically reduces your mortgage payment. Now, if you've ever run the numbers on an investment property, you know that's a big deal. Now, here's where the golden opportunity comes in. When mortgage rates change, it can take a while for other things like seller incentives to start catching up. So even though you can get a mortgage rate in the low sixes right now, and that could be even lower by the time you're seeing this video, right now you can also lock in a rate buy-down credit on top of that. And this is huge, people, huge. With the two combined, our team's finance expert said he's seeing our clients locking in rates he hasn't seen in years. But here's the catch. The window of opportunity here is very narrow. This overlap will close very soon. So those seller incentives are going to fall off very, very soon. There are two more reasons to move quickly on this. One, prices are rising week over week. And now that rates are going down, they're going to spike even more dramatically, which will be made worse by two increasing competition. Potential buyers have been sitting on the sidelines just waiting for rates to drop. And now that they have, they're going to flood the market, reproduce bidding wars, pushing prices even higher. If you need a refresher on the advantages of owning real estate, like how it delivers four streams of income through number one, appreciation and equity gains. Number two, principal reduction by your tenants. Number three, tax benefits and depreciation. And number four, cash flow. I'll link another video in the description so you can check that out. But if you've done your research and you already understand why build to rent properties in high growth rental markets are a great path to financial freedom, then take action right now. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity to fast track your investing strategy. Cash in on this narrow overlap of lower rates and seller incentives while it's here. Click the link below and schedule a free call right now. It could be the most important call you make this year. Okay, so by now you might be wondering about specific states. And I don't want to undermine the importance of doing your own due diligence. I strongly believe in the power of market research. And just because a state is landlord friendly, it doesn't mean the city or the county itself is. Take, for example, Tennessee, a state that is by all accounts red. However, Nashville voted not too long ago, of course, to limit what you could do with Airbnb and short term rentals. That completely changed the dynamic for people who had invested in that city with the intention of renting out short-term rentals. They had to completely change their strategy. So again, you can't always judge a book by its cover. At Morris Invest, our development team spends the better part of a year researching markets. We want to understand if the market is landlord friendly, if it has a solid economy, and so much more. And if you're the type of investor that doesn't have the time or the resources to go through this market research process yourself, then our done-for-you service could be a fit for you. If you're interested in learning more about our build to rent properties in our specific markets, schedule a free call on our website. Just go to morrisinvest.com. There's a big red button right there that says book a call. Just fill out that form. It's very simple to do. And let us know when is the best time to call you because a little calendar will pop up. You pick the time. Make sure you put in the correct email address and phone number. Otherwise, we'll be calling a phone number that doesn't work. That's happened. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, I'm not going to leave you empty handed here, though. I want you to be reminded to take these recommendations with a grain of salt. Don't go out there and buy a rental property in one of these states just based on this information alone. 
you're going to need to do further research. You're going to need to pull data points in the specific market that you are considering. What does the crime look like there? What does the job growth look like there? Just because it's landlord friendly, maybe the job market is terrible. So really, you need to look at all of these things. Generally speaking, these are some landlord friendly states, though. I will give them for you right here. Okay, Texas tops on the list. Missouri tops on the list. Indiana tops on the list. Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Colorado, and Florida. That's a good list, okay? That should start you off, right? And on the other side of the coin, these states are not so landlord friendly. California, one of the worst. New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Oregon, Massachusetts, terrible. I would highly recommend you stay away from investing in those states. Now, as you can see, the trend is that red states tend to be more landlord friendly. Blue states, not so much. Landlord friendliness exists on a spectrum, but I hope this gave you a good starting off point. Now, if you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe. And I also know you're going to love this next video. It's called Watch Out for These Five Red Flags When Investing. And we'll see you next time.